Hi, hello, one I come and welcome back to at another episode. I mean another interesting episode on your favorite Little Slaw YouTube channel. So today in this video, we're going to see about true client web scripting. So you're going to record your first web true client scripting. So before we move on to this uh, scripting, I'll explain you what is a true client and how to record your first true client script. And going forward, we will see a lot of uh, videos uh, where we can uh, deepen our knowledge on uh, using the true client uh, interface so yeah this is me asan chanmugam i welcome you all to our little slide tip channel so please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet and please do join my channel uh, for, for a continuous for a continuous support where you're going to get a lot of perks like discounts in the trainings and uh, access to the training videos and you will get uh, early access to the videos and you will get one on one support from me so these are some of the perks you will be getting it and uh, so coming back to this true client uh, so let me first try to create a new script and solution so i'm going to so yeah uh, once you click the file click on new script and solution so you'll get this create a new script window and i'm going to select the single protocol and at this i'm going to select the true client web so i'm just going to try the true client web and since we have like other options as well like the true client mobile web and the true client native web so we'll see that in our later videos so for now i'm going to show you how to do your first true client web script and uh, let me create a solution for this as well okay i have my uh, uh, the location of the script uh, under my location and then the script is going to be uh, true client day one so this is going to be my first video on day one and yeah so what is true client what is the difference between the web and the true client why does the true client comes into picture so true client or i mean the true client scripts that we're going to create are created basically using the true client engine which is a powerful and intuitive tool which is designed for web application testing right so this is designed for web application so most of us might ask like can i try windows applications or can i try any other web api or something like that for now you can use the true client for web application in case if you have your web services as a, uh, in terms of web application like if you're able to pass the url yes you can also even record your api testing as well <clears throat> but this is more useful in terms of web application rather than api so that's the reason i'm telling you this is mainly designed for web application so unlike traditional scripting methods which rely on writing complex code so true client offers a user friendly interface to simplify the script development process i will show you uh, how simple is that i mean like you can uh, easily implement the logics you can easily implement the uh, waiting times the writing the scripts adding values the parameters correlations so all these are very simplified so, and again mm, the true client interface is divided into two main sections so when i'm when i'm uh, creating the script you will see uh, the two main sections which one is the browser window and the other one is the true client development window and the browser window is where you interact with your web application which performs the action you want to test such as clicking your clicking the buttons filling out the forms or navigating between pages so all these we'll see uh, in the demo now and as you perform these actions which is the navigations clicking filling out forms so the true client engine automatically records them and generates corresponding script steps in real time and these steps are displayed in the true client development window at the side for you so where they appear in a clear graphical format which is described in the plain english uh, rather than so usually when we create uh, scripts uh, using this web or something so we'll be getting scripts uh, in, a, in, in a in a high uh, english like uh, what i would say is like in terms of coding right uh, the c codes but now when we uh, create the code using this true client what happens is like they come in very simple english they come in very plain english rather than the traditional lines of code so this approach i mean this approach of this uh, plain english will make it easier for users to understand like for us to understand and for managing the scripts and without needing any deep programming knowledge so most of us will have a question like do i need to learn coding but when you are using true client you don't need coding so once you completed the recording phase true client provides a range of options to refine and enhance your script so you can edit the details of each step such as changing input values or adjusting wait times so the drag and drop functionality allows you to reorder steps easily ensuring the script reflects the correct sequence of actions so in addition to basic editing you can integrate standard view gen functionalities into your script 
such as adding parameters to simulate different user inputs and transactions to measure performance metrics. And moreover, True Client offers advanced customization by allowing you to embed JavaScript code and EPAs directly into your scripts. So we will see that as well in, a, in another example. And the capability, I mean, this capability of adding, uh, embedding JavaScript code and API provides flexibility to handle complex scenarios and uh, interact with dynamic elements or execute custom logic that goes beyond the standard operations. So overall, True Client combines the ease of use with powerful features, making it an ideal choice for testers who want to create robust, efficient, and maintainable scripts for web application testing. So now we'll go on to the first day, day one video. So I have my script name, I have my location, and I'm going to click on create. So once I click create, uh, you'll able to you'll be able to see the true uh, the actions uh, screen. So here, there is one. Um, <clears throat> uh, when again, uh, when comparing to the regular the web application script, so you, we usually see the v user in it. We, usually, we can see actions, and then v user end. But this library view is something uh, which is an additional part which you can see in your true client scripting. And this, again, like they said, this is a read-only representation of the actual scripts for editing. We have to press the develop script button. And here we have the actions. So uh, usually the, the way of recording scripts starts here. So when I click, click on develop scripts, and again, before I... Uh, develop my script clicking on develop script there are like three browsers i have like one is chromium and the other one is true client browser and the other one is ie so for this demo i'm going to use the true client browser and when i click on develop script i'll be taken to two windows like i told you earlier so this is one window let me expand it so this is one window and then i have my true client browser window so like i told you uh, initially, we have like two sections. So one is the browser window, which is, which you can see it on the right side of my screen, and the other one is the true client development window. Right. So now let's uh, start recording the script. So now to start the recording uh, in web application script, normally we used to give the URL, we used to select the browser while we start creating our script. But now here. Just go to the true client browser uh, to the browser uh, section uh, to the where we enter the URL and enter this URL and when I click enter oh sorry uh, I think I have got that yeah so before you start recording you have to click on the so yeah again we have like several uh, options like we'll see them one by one but for now uh, we have this step function where we can add manually the steps like for example we can have, we have to add the thing template so for that we can use the wait and we can add the thing time and we have the flow control where we can we have like a lot of options to do the flow control like for example you can use the for loop you can use the if block if verify if exist if browser you can break you can continue you can catch error like try catcher and then even you can exit out of the iteration in case if something goes wrong and then apart from that we have a miscellaneous so this is the most critical part for those who like coding you can try the wonders like you can use javascript you can use jc JavaScript on object, comment, and render verse as well. So now let me go to the recording part. So click on this uh, start recording button. And once you start uh, clicking, or once you clicked on that button, all the other uh, uh, images will go gray. So you won't be able to click on replay or you won't be able to click on the toggle breakpoint. So only thing available is the uh, stop button. So now I'm going to click enter the URL and when I click enter. So now if you see the moment I clicked enter, the navigate to petstore.octopop.com uh, has popped up. So the first step has successfully got recorded. So the moment you enter the steps, automatically you can see how does it work and how, how it really works in the screen. So let me do my second action. So you don't need to give any uh, transaction names for now, but for now I'm just going to click on the links. So clicking on fish and then clicking on one of the product ID, and then selecting add to cart and then clicking proceed to checkout. So I have five transactions now, right? So I'm going to stop it. And before that, yeah, let me uh, stop the transaction. So now I have my scripts recorded. And let me take you through each uh, step for you. So the first step which we did here is the 
uh, the navigation. So if you see, we have got lots and lots of actions, right? We have got activate, activate tab, add tab, close, close HTML dialog, close tab. So there are like lots and lots of options. I mean, like we will we'll see how does all these work and with with a, with a valid example, how does these actions work? Uh, and then for now, we'll go to navigate. And then under the object timeout, uh, here if you see, we can uh, use the value from runtime settings. So this is what has been recorded when we were doing the recording. So the object timeout is 20 and then the step timeout is 180. And the end event is automatic. It's not yet set. So in case if we want to add any end event, we can do that action. Like for example, the action is completed or the step network completed or DOM content loaded or document loaded. So for most of the times we used to see like, or we used to complain that uh, the page yeah, the page gets loaded, but still I could see the uh, the particular uh, data or particular uh, part of the section is not being loaded. So you can set up all those things, like you can set up that as an end event. So once everything gets loaded automatically, uh, this transaction will get over and you will move to the second next page. So you can set it up. So for example, I can set like action completed or I can even keep it as automatic. So I'm not setting anything, so it will be automatic. And then moving to the arguments. Uh, okay, we can actually change the URL here. This is what uh, the location is it's editable. So we can change the URL. And we have like other options, for example, like, uh, let me just change it here. Uh, let me get the URL. Okay, we have this part. So when I click on the button, I can, I've got this part here. So yeah. And if I want to make it to JS, I can change it to JS. If I want to keep it as uh, the other location part, I can change it. Yeah, so you, I can use the parameter name and do not put the value in quotation marks. So I can use it as a parameter value. So for, for now, I'm going to just give the direct value as JS. And then coming to the transactions, uh, I don't have any transactions yet defined, so I'm just leaving it out. So in case if I want to add any transaction, I can add it from here. So for example, like if you see, I can add a transaction here and I can enter the step, uh, what it can be. Like it can be a next action or it can be whatever actions which I want to add, I can add it. But for now, I'm not going to add any transactions. So let me remove them or let me delete them. And then moving on to the second step. So previous, the first step is navigation. And the second step is I have clicked on the link. So this is not like again, I'm telling you, this is not like the web requests where you are going to send a request, where you're going to deal with the correlations, where you're going to deal with the URL. So the first step is the only one that deals with the URL. And after that, everything is like the actions, like click, you have double click, you have drag, you have drag. I mean, all these things you must have seen uh, in, in, in the old Visual Studio Code or Visual, uh, Visual Basic. So there we will be using these actions and everything. So this is again something similar to that because these are like uh, mostly like drag and drop or click actions. Same thing here. So the end event is not yet set, and you can see the arguments. Uh, usually we click on the left mouse button. So in case if you want to change the left mouse button, you can change it to middle or right. So for now I'm going to select the left, and then the x coordinate uh, since it's on the top of the screen, and I have selected the uh, it's selected as 16,5. So the x coordinate and y coordinate we must have studied the old graphs. So it is selected as x coordinate as 16 and y coordinate as 5, and that's been selected. And then we have got the object. So in the object, you can see it's the role is uh, image and it's a link element, and the name is link1. And the ID method is automatic. So in case if you want to write, write it through a uh, XPath or JavaScript, again, this is like a huge amount of things are uh, there to learn. We'll, we'll go through them one by one. This is again your first script, so I'm just taking you through very simple topics. And then finally, the transactions. In case if you wanted any transactions, you can do it. And then same thing for all the other transactions because all of them are click transactions. Like everything is click, and you're going to click whatever text you have. And once you find everything is OK, uh, you can go to the run logic. So if you see, we have got the init block, the run block, and then you have got the end block. Coming to the actions, if you want, you can just, you have to actually validate. So I'm just clicking on replay. Okay, I think I can, I have to save this first and then uh, let me close this one. Don't reload it, yes, yep. 
So moving to the actions part. Okay, fine, I think for now, I think the script has been uh, completed. So let's go to the screen. So if you see, um, uh, let me just close this button, close the screen, sorry. Um, yeah, so if you remember, these are the steps that we have created. The first is navigation, and then we clicked these links. And if I run this script, so you can see here, the first transaction has started, navigation to the pet store, and then it is clicking on the first link, the image one, that's that's been clicked. And then let's wait for the next steps to proceed. Yep, so now it is going to the next steps. So yeah, the script has passed. So the script, the very first script that we have created has been successfully passed. And apart from this, uh, we have got, we were able to convert this script to web HTTP HTML protocol in case if we need. And also we can convert the script to dev web. And then coming to the settings part here. Um, this is something like we have in the runtime settings, but again, we have the runtime settings, but still we do have this true client general settings where we can set up the proxy selections, where we can set up the advanced, where we can keep the uh, keep a live timeout value, we can increase it or we can decrease it. And then we can also deal with the temporary internet files, whether we need to check for new versions of store pages, uh, never or not, or every time we are visiting it. And then we, have, we can also set up the HTTP version settings. And apart from that, we can also deal with the certificates, the minimum supported secure protocol. And then coming to the interactive options so in case if there are any other any error do we need to proceed or do we need to abort and uh, record the snapshot transactions so if you want to record your snapshot transactions you can record it and if you do not want you can click on never and while replaying you can also select the all uh, replay snapshot generation so you, can, you have like a lot of options to try here like when it comes to debug and when it comes to automatic recovery and then if your application is something which is like a very internal uh, uh, client so you can also attach your client certificate and you can run it because sometimes what happens is like you won't be able to record your application because you won't be having your client certificate. So you download it from the, uh, the, the CSR file and then attach it here. So you'll be able to uh, record your application. And apart from that, we do have the runtime settings, which you will see in our upcoming videos. But for now, you have successfully created your first true client script, right? And uh, yeah. Uh, so if you have your, any doubts or any queries, please do comment in the comment section and we'll meet in our next video about that and we'll talk about that in the next video. And uh, try this step. Don't just uh, uh, watch it. Just practice it so that you will be understanding. And you, if you have, you must have some queries and if, or if something is not working, please reach out to me. We'll discuss that in our next video. So for now, you have created your first true client script. So with that, I come to an end and I definitely uh, will take you through the next steps and yeah uh, i'm taking a break for now and see you in my next video until then it's bye bye from asan shanmugam and your favorite little star youtube channel take care and bye bye